Hey folks, this is Josh, Stony Ridge Farmer. Welcome back to the farm. Today we're going to be working on the Willis Jeep. We got our starter back from the remanufactured facility and we're going to have some fun unboxing this cool primitive tool. So come along today on the farm vlog. We're going to have a little bit of fun working in this shop and cross your fingers that we get the willies to fire today. It's going to be awesome. Woo! The first thing we're going to do today is we're going to unbox this cool tool. It's a primitive tool that we got off of eBay. We'll set all this crap over to the side here, make sure I don't bury my knife. And in here is the cool tool. All right. I have been, well, let's just say I want to take you guys in the kitchen and want to work with this tool right here. It's pretty nifty. If you've never seen butter made, we're going to do a video about how to make butter with what you can buy in the store. And I'm sure you guys are chomping at the bit to leave a comment down there right now to say, oh, I know how to do it, I know how. But have you ever seen one of these? This guy packed it really well. <laughs> Good job on the packing, bud. Whatever the guy's name I bought it from. All right, check it out. This is a vintage butter churn. So in other words, these paddles right here will turn and we'll put some high fat content milk or cream in there and these paddles will turn and this will churn butter check it out love stuff like this also a really cool item to put in a shelf at your cabin or use it so we're going to use it cool let's get on the jeep so here's a starter that we had rebuilt and i'll talk to you a little bit about what i'm impressed with and what i wasn't so impressed with some of the wires are still frayed in here and when we first tested it, it didn't work. So in other words, this little actuator did not work. We're gonna get you a little close up real quick. So let me be the first to tell you that I'm not the expert on the six volt system. What I do know is that this area needs to be clean and free of debris and paint. And this area right here needs to be clean and free of debris and paint. And also where it attaches to the block, both in this area and in this area, needs to be clean so that we'll get a good ground so that it completes the circuit. The way this works is the hot wire, the six volt wire, goes onto here. And this actuator is engaged by a pedal in the center of the Jeep. Now, when we first tested it, we hooked the hot up, we hooked the negative up, and we mashed the button right here, that actuator, and inside this little box, it arced, and it would not work. It would barely turn over. I took it over to AutoZone and had it tested, and it runs like a rock star, but once we took this apart, we found that the culprit was inside there, and they cleaned that up too when they rebuilt it. Now, let's get you a little closer look at the rebuild. So, inside there are the little springs where we took it out before, and right inside here is the old wire, and it's a little bit frayed. I don't know if you can see that or not, but they replaced some of the brushes, like this guy. We have new wire, obviously, there, and some of them they didn't replace. So if you look in there, you can see frayed wires. To me, I wasn't really happy with frayed wires. So guys, let that be a lesson to you. Before you take something to a rebuild shop, be sure you specify what you want done. The cost for a rebuild was $85. I had an old starter here that I swapped him off for 20 bucks. So $65, but they didn't even replace all the brushes. They did turn the armature and I guess they put new bushings in it, but for a coat of Krylon and just cleaning it up, I would have expected them to replace the brushes. That's where the work lied, was replacing brushes and rewiring things and making sure everything's right and tight and new. That's what I call a starter rebuild. Guys, post me a comment down there if you've ever had an experience like this. Should I expect him to replace all the moving parts and all the wearable parts if I paid for a rebuild on the starter? I think so. I don't know. Let me know. So the first place we're going to start is under the hood here, and this is where the bracket mounts up. So we're going to take our wire wheel and we're going to use it to clean up where that bracket goes into place. And this way we get good contact with the engine block. Now also we want to make sure that we get good contact right here. You can look back there now and you can see that spot right there is where the starter will mount up to the bell housing or the back of the motor. You want to get down to the bare metal. There isn't a whole lot of rust on here, but We'll see in a second. This will make a big difference. That cleaned up really nicely. Now basically we're just going to go around the starter and do the same thing. Mm -hmm. 
Now we'll flip the starter and we'll go to the bracket right here where it touches the motor and we'll do the same thing. All right, we're gonna put some eye protection on and we're gonna go ahead and clean up all the nuts and bolts and washers and everything that we used in disassembling this. That way we put it all back together clean and nice. Kind of clean and nice. This Jeep's old, it's ratty. Kind of like spray painting a turd. Still a turd underneath there. <laughs> They're not polishing. <laughs> I'm gonna lean over in here and get to work. The starter bolt on the top and the back is a booger to get in there and get started. My hands are just too big. So we're gonna get back in here and do our very best. Gotta get it started with my fingers. Hopefully it'll thread on in there without giving me too much trouble. It was a pain in the butt to get out. Real pain in the butt. There we go, daddy like that. Got the right extension in there now. Guys, we're coming out with some new shirts that will cover my butt crack, I swear. <laughs> We're coming out with some new shirts, the Stony Ridge Speed Shop. They're gonna have the Buick Grand National on them, uh, the tractor and the Jeep. So it's gonna be a pretty cool shirt. As soon as they come out, I'll let you know. We're in the design process right now. Also, Stony Ridge Farm fencing shirts are gonna be coming out and they are pretty cool. I won't even do a spoiler on that, I'll just show you. Nugger down, baby. Big baby D. I think we torqued that one down a little bit too tight. It's all right, baby. Old American engineering right there. All right, so the last thing we're gonna hook up is our battery terminal cable. And there's also a signal wire that goes to the starter here. I think that sends juice through to the voltage regulator, if I'm not mistaken. It just seems loose, even though I've tightened it. Not impressed with my rebuild, guys. Guy didn't do a good job. I even asked him if we could follow along with the cameras and, and watch the rebuild. Guess I know why we can't now. So the terminal that holds this uh, hot wire was loose. I don't... I don't get I don't get bad work. I don't understand. Especially if you're getting paid to do something for somebody, I just don't understand why not do a bang up job because you're just gonna earn more business by doing a really good job and impressing the, the guy so he comes back. Final step, we're gonna tighten up our battery terminal and then we'll give it a try. Nice. Fingers crossed, big time. So okay. Guys, so when you're filming in a garage, just so you know, there aren't enough lights just from up here. So I have a couple peripheral lights here, and I just looked into one, and all I could see is spots right now. So this machine has not been started in 30 years or so, 25 to 30 years, something like that. I remember riding around on it as a kid. So we're going to do a little starter fluid here give it its best shot I got new plugs and I got new wires but I wanted to just see if I could get it to turn over oh here we go so let's mash the button what's well, doing the same thing kidding me it's doing the same thing it did before I know this starter works okay here's a button it's under here okay push it yeah. hard Keep pushing, pushing hard. Okay, good, stop. I don't get it. Mrs. Stony Ridge is going to be our starter button masher. Underneath here is the starter button. Put your foot on it there, honey. Right there, okay. She's going to mash that in, and that sends this little actuator right here forward. This little piece here goes forward, and go ahead and mash it. That should engage the starter. The starter should be spinning at the moment. Mash it about three times real hard. Okay, that's good. I don't get it. I don't get why it's not starting. I don't get why that starter's not turning over. I did take it and have it tested to make sure that it was right, that it was good, and it was good. 
So I don't get it. The battery is fully charged, 100% fully charged. I'm going to put the charger on it and put it on the jump or boost mode and see if that helps. We're going to try her again here. Here it goes. Oh, cool. Nope. So I can turn this engine over with my hand very, very easily. The only thing I can think of, and I took the bracket off of the starter, and it's got a lot of rust and paint on it. So I'm going to clean it up with the wire wheel and put it back on and see if it's just not getting good contact to ground. I don't know. That's the only thing I can think of. Okay, so it's not working. I know the starter works. The battery is on charge. We're going to head to the parts store. We're going to spend the time tonight and we're going to get this done. I don't care if I got to be up till midnight. I want this engine to turn over. Mrs. Stony Ridge is standing behind the camera right now thinking, I'm not going to be out here till midnight. So looks like it's just me and you guys. Okay, so we're back from the parts store and this is my hopeful solution. We're going to replace the battery ground terminal with a terminal just like this that's going to go straight to the ground on the starter and maybe that's the issue maybe the engine isn't grounded properly to the chassis on this machine that's the only thing that i can really come up with because i know the starter works i know it turns over good it's it's frustrating you know you get into projects like this and things just don't go the way you think they're going to go. It's not like the hot rod shows that you see on TV where everything just goes perfect right away, you know. This is real life, I guess. So we'll take this battery terminal off. I already put a new ground terminal on here and it's grounded to the body and the chassis right here in the front of the Jeep, but evidently that's just not enough. Just FYI, this is a brand new battery, by the way. I uh, bought it and I put it on the Farmall tractor to try and get it started and we ended up selling the Farmall. Hopefully that guy comes and gets his tractor soon. And so we've, we've got a brand spanking new interstate battery. It's a good battery too. It's not a El Cheapo Walmart battery. It's a it's a good one. Probably get 10,000 views on this. I need 10,000 toes and fingers crossed here, guys. Really, really want to get this Jeep to start. Oh, my arm is stuck. Oh, nice. So we're all wired up. Let me get you in here a little closer where you can see what's going on. So here is the positive that goes from the battery right to the positive on the starter. This is what engages the starter back here. And here is our new ground wire that we've just installed back to the battery to ground this sucker out. Now I got the one with the extension lead on here so in case I want to take this strap and ground it to the actual body but this thing's fairly rusty. If I want to put a self tap and screw in here and just mount it to the body I can. Now here is the original ground wire and that's what originally came on the vehicle. I replaced the battery terminal connector but really the wire probably is roachy and needs to be replaced too. So let's cross our fingers and our toes. It's now 9 p.m. Oh boy, the sound I want to hear is the sound of a 1952 Willys Jeep turning over. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Still something isn't right, but it did turn over. What is up, man? That was the best we've gotten so far. Here it goes. Wow, come on, baby. It did turn over once, and then that was it. The engine spins freely. <sighs> All right. The starter motor here isn't that complicated. You give it power, and you give it ground, and it's supposed to spin. It's ain't rocket science. It sure is turning out to be rocket science. The only thing I can think of is that the battery is bad. It has to be the battery. This is a brand new battery. I mean, literally was bought two and a half months ago, something like that. I'm gonna put it on the charger overnight. We're gonna come back in the morning and see what we have here. It's got to be, it has to be a battery issue. It just has to be. It is 
2 o'clock the next day. The battery's been on charge all night long, and I'm going to get in here and try this once again and see if we get this thing to turn over. I'm beginning to think it's a bad battery. Now, it's been on charge all night long. I came out this morning. It said it was 100% charged, so I just restarted the charging cycle, and now it says it's 95% charged. It's a 6-volt system. It says it's at 6 volts. So, I'm going to first disconnect the charger and then I'm going to try it and then if that doesn't work I'm going to put it on boost and there's a 100 amp engine starter boost on this and we're going to try it that way so let's see how she goes. This is day number four at this so we'll turn her key to the on position and see if she turns over. Come on baby please. <laughs> Turning over. Ha <laughs> ha! Finally, it's turning over. Now I don't see where we're getting any sign of spark at all. I'm gonna get my voltmeter and make sure I'm getting voltage to my coil. So the first thing we're gonna do with the voltmeter is make sure it's good to go. We get 4.83 volts on the battery. It's a little bit on the soft side. Now we'll go from the negative side of the battery right to the coil. 4.71 on both sides of the coil. So we should have power there. Make sure our coil wire is good. Should have power coming out of the top of the coil here too. Let's go. Yep. So we've got voltage coming out of the top of the coil. Now we didn't get any fire but we don't have a fuel source really. So I think we're gonna jump on here and we're gonna turn this engine over just a little bit more and I'm gonna pour a little bit of fuel in the carburetor. Now I'm not pouring a ton of fuel in this carb, just about like a shot glass full of fuel. There isn't much fuel in this tank right here in this little canister. I don't wanna spill it on a spot that might cause a spark. So let's give her another try. Get up here. We have power to the coil, power to the battery. We'll fire up again. There is a snotty blob of oil coming out of the crankcase and into this canister right here. Let's see if I can fix that. Now you willies guys, let me know what that canister is for. I've got a little piece of tubing. I'm gonna slide into that other piece of tubing and we'll go right to here this is something to do with the fuel pump but I am not the expert on this so we'll connect that circuit and we'll hit it again I don't feel like I'm getting spark um, but I don't know it may need to turn over some more so let's give it a try again oh if I can get my foot up in here contact Come on, baby. I hear noises. Let's just take off the distributor and see if we're getting sparked to the points system here. I don't guess I would get sparked to the point system. This thing looks pretty corroded in here. I'd say pretty corroded. It's real darn corroded. Let's take a look. Here's inside the distributor cap. I do not have a new distributor cap for this, but that is really, really corroded. So I'm gonna clean that up real quick. Probably not making contact with the uh, rotor button right here. I did sand onto, on the points a little bit. Let me turn it over and see what this does. Any spark. All right, I couldn't tell. This is the number one spark plug. We've already pulled it one time before to take a quick peek at it. Didn't look too bad. Probably wouldn't hurt to have some new ones. I got a little, got a little fuel on it. That's okay. All right, we're gonna try this again. I'm gonna zoom in on that spark plug. Nice to have the technology to be able to share this with you guys. <laughs> Pretty cool. I should be able to see this. <laughs> 
I don't see any spark. All right, so while I'm scratching my head here, guys, post me some comments down here what I should be doing and what I shouldn't be doing. I think I'm doing the right thing, but we shall see. I probably shouldn't have my face so close to a battery while it's charging. I think we have two bad parts at play right here. We've got the engine turning over, that's awesome, but I think our rotor button, I guess you call it your rotor button, I'm gonna get you a close up of this. I think it's bad, and I also think that our cap is bad, and our wires are bad. Um, I'm not seeing any sign of a spark, and I do believe there's a little spring-loaded little tab that's supposed to be down so that I get contact with my rotor button down here. I cannot get that to pop out. So I think it's just corroded or broken off. There were broken pieces inside here when I first opened it up. Let me show you really quickly. So this is the rotor and I cleaned that up and I cleaned this up with a little bit of sandpaper, but you can see underneath here, it was cracked off and broken. Let's get you a look inside the cap. So inside the cap right here, this piece in the very center, I believe should be extended from here. It's flat and almost looks like something is broken off of it. So I think we need to get a new cap, wires, and plugs. I have a good mind to just order a condenser, points, all the ignition stuff. I'm gonna need it eventually anyway. We're gonna get more into this restoration than and I think I just about guarantee you. I'd like to do a full restoration on this Jeep. I just don't know if it makes good financial sense for me right now, or if it makes good sense altogether for me to spend this amount of money on a old Willis Jeep when we've got a 68 Bronco up there in the garage that we could be putting our time and money into. I don't know, I'm gonna let the battery charge up. We gotta make a parts run and be sure and catch the next vlog on the Jeep here. So hopefully with the next video, we'll have replaced all the plugs, all the wires, the condenser, the coil, the cap, the rotor, and maybe we'll just see. We'll just see how she goes. I'm gonna tinker around with it a little bit more. If it gets started today, I'll let you guys know. If not, Thanks a lot for joining me here on the Stony Ridge Farm today. I appreciate you. Come on back and see us some more. We've got a lot more work to do on the old Willie Street. We're gonna get this Jeep running. I guarantee. We'll see you next time on the Stony Ridge Farm vlog, guys. Woo! Well, come on down to the Stony Ridge. Bring your wife and bring your kids. We're living life here and sweet. That's the way it's supposed to be, Stony Ridge. The lines of communicate. <laughs> Make sure that the lines. Neat, neat. Hey, bud. Screwdriver. Can I drop some more cool stuff? That'll be fun. Wee. Lord.